when at events like this, and this is a very wonderful event, it's really a celebration. So I've decided, rather than reading sad poems, to read this kind of amusing, I hope, monologue, because we're very near Easter, and it's called Humpty, Dumpst Humpty Dumpty's Existential Monologue. <laughs> Bent under the yoke of isolation on this high and winding wall, I cannot help dwelling on the problem of my girth, which, alas, keeps constantly expanding. Count all the egg puns. I have tried all sorts of diets, egged on by my spouse, who makes valiant efforts to cut down on my consumption. My problem is I can never have enough. <laughs> Neighbors chatting 19 to the dozen make constant comments about my weight. And while it certainly is a fertile topic of conversation, I fear that the charge of exhausting their patients may eventually be laid at my door. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I follow a strict regime for maybe two or three weeks and then I chicken out. <laughs> I realize I need to exercise a lot more, take up Pilates, or go to the gym. But the last two options involve a lot of expense. And in truth, I find the whole thing too exacting. Now my sperm count has dwindled, and Mrs. Dumpty is extremely unhappy at the hope of future prof progeny might become extinct. Each time we look on a plate of scrambled eggs, she sighs, saying, There go our crazy mixed-up kids. <laughs> I know I shouldn't beat myself up about this. <laughs> but she has invoked the help of her hard-boiled brother. Last week he told me if I continued to expose myself to ridicule by my gross self-indulgence, he would be forced to take drastic action. He actually said he believed I was cracking up <laughs> and suggested I leave the family home for sheltered accommodation. <laughs>